Hello my friends, if you like my work please remember to click thumb up, subscribe to my channel or hit the notification bell to be informed about new videos. I'd just like to say thank you to all my patrons, please join them if you can, the link is in the description below. As you probably remember from the previous episode, I finished working on the model and now it's time to start weathering, which is what I like the most. To make it easier I made a quick plan with the most important points to be implemented, so as not to forget and have help if the memory fails. I recommend this solution because then you can better plan your work and implement everything you want to show in a given project. Personally, I use this method in every model, only sometimes the moment of writing down such a plan is different. It all depends on the situation. I almost always start weathering with a wash. This time will be no different. Modeler's World products are perfect for this job and I really enjoy working with them. There is no glossy varnish on the model, only a thin layer of satin, which as you remember, I applied to protect the dry decals in the previous episode. Generally, it's such a thin layer that doesn't affect the spread of the wash in nooks and crannies. The important thing I would like to mention is that I try to use all the products I put on the model to the maximum extent possible. I am talking about a situation where even a wash that is applied in excess can be used to make some extra effects in the form of dirt, streaks or stains. Nowadays there are so many different colored products that such effect can be done in many different ways. The most important thing is to remember that all chemistry changes the shade of paint applied to the model and more precisely darkens it, so you have to keep this in mind. After completing the process of highlighting all the details on the model, I wanted to prepare at least most of the chassis with wheels and trucks. That's why I first painted a few thin layers of dust using weathering paints. But before I did that, I applied the same paint on the trucks with a thick brush, not sparring it and covering the entire elements in quite large amounts. I tried to ensure that the paint penetrated into all the cavities of the individual links. Leaving it to dry I went back to the hull and just now painted a few thin layers of dust as a base for pigments. Of course I did the same on the wheels, but here in addition to the dark dust, which is asphalt street dirt, gently sprayed sandy dust. There was also a thin layer of bright dust on the hull. It will perfectly match the color of the pigment I want to use. One more note about painting the wheels. My painting, and I have to say it honestly and without diming, it's not entirely consistent with the historical truth. The wheels were painted on both sides in the color of camouflage. Recently I came across a very good condition real wheel from Panther on which you can clearly see the sand paint on both sides of the wheel. So my artistic treatment of painting is only artistic painting to increase the attractiveness of the model. It's like if someone wanted to accuse me of doing it wrong. 
I know about it and I will probably continue to do so. But ok, now it's time for pigment. The light grey shade will be perfect for a vehicle operating mainly in urban areas. I put a really small amount of powder on the wheels, being careful not to overdo it and keep the colors more visible than I usually do on models operating in the field. I fixed the pigment with white spirit and quickly dried it with an accelerator. The sides of the hull were also properly soiled and fixed with the same product. On the bottom I also did the proper dirtying, not forgetting about suspension system arms. And now you can see how I make the effects on the bottom of the hull and more precisely how the first phase of this works looks like, because the continuation will be in a moment. Of course the rubber bandages were also properly dusted and I didn't forget to treat them with my finger to wipe off the excess of pigment. In addition of course I blew out the excess adding a little more to the general mess I had due to earlier work on the table. Unfortunately that's what happens when we use these products, but it has its undeniable charm. The outer and most visible surfaces of all wheels have been further upgraded with dry mud. I polished the edges of the middle wheels, which were silvered by the teeth of the trucks with a pigment and silicon tip. It gives effects comparable to polishing with a pencil and when I think about it, it seems to me that the pigment works a little better in this. Here on the idler wheels you can see the difference. On the left wheel with uh, silver paint and on the right polished with a pencil. In addition I also wiped them with a cotton bud. The title of this chapter is not accidental. The bottom of the vehicle is the least visible surface in the model, but I always say that it's an integral part of the vehicle and should be finished like all other elements. Earlier I applied pigments and rubbed the bottom a bit and now I apply oil spills using a wash. In addition I also use diluted engine grease oil paint which also works very well in this role. Big splashes and small splashes also do the job. You can do this section in a relatively short time.
Another hardly visible effect are scratches on the wheels that I make with a sharp tip of the pair of tweezers or with a hobby knife. Of course, not on all wheels. At this point we return to the tracks that have already dried completely and apply the same weathering paint with a bit of acrylic doctor on them. Before it dries I add pigment dry with accelerator and polish the edges with a soft pencil. Of course I also do this effect from the inside with the difference that instead of pencil I use the previously used silicon tip and metallic pigment. The truth is that it will be not visible at all, but it has to be done. Putting ready tracks on the wheels is not as quick and easy as you can see in the video, but here I shortened my struggle so as not to bore you with the lack of effects. Everything is due to the fact that I always try to do it as gently as possible and that's why it takes so long. After installing the wheels I polish the tips of the visible teeth of the drive wheels. A sharp pointed pencil will be enough for this. The metallic effects won't hurt either, so it's worth taking a few moments to do them. Even such small things as a polished screw do the job. Red Oxide Primer is like all other single color camos, so you have to think beforehand how you will make it look interesting. I had two options here and I used both. The first one was a slight color change by applying a red acrylic filter. I applied it only on some elements which can be clearly seen because after the second layer the difference is quite large. Of course it's worth using the accelerator for this purpose because it definitely speeds up the work and facilitates quick assessment of the effects of applying the filter. The second option was oil paints which give a completely different effect and are as desirable as the filter. The colors you can see in the video were enough to introduce variety on individual surfaces. With a bit of thinner I spread them on specific places and left them to dry freely but also to rest for the eyes and catch a fresh look which contrary to appearances is quite important. For the turret I decided to do some effects by polishing the piece of... Um, I don't know how to call it, but you can see what I mean. Graphite from a soft pencil and delicate polishing with a silicon tip and a few traces of a hobby knife did the job enough to accept the effect that was created in this way.
After a break for silver ink I went back to applying an additional amount of oil paints, adding colors, but most of all building dirt using dark brown and dark grey which I used in the vast majority. Thanks to this shade it's easy to build traces that the crew leaves on the driveway during daily service. It's ideal for any dirt in the vicinity of hatches where individual crew members stay most often and for the longest time. I have already said that Adam Wilder's E50 model is an inspiration for me and I didn't hide that I will also use some of his ideas. One of them is to add extra welds which I want to leave unpainted that is in silver. As always I made them with green stuff and properly shaped with my C-shape tool. For painting I used silver paint and dark grey oil paints to prepare the welding marks. A drop of wash to emphasize all of the shapes and a bit of pencil rubbing at the end. For me the effect is great. As before I was doing some additional painting on red oxide, so now on the sand camo fragments I'm doing exactly the same effect but with different colors of course. I treat it as adding extra tones to the base color, but I also used these colors to make a few stains on the side walls of the hull. All in all it's not a complicated matter, but in my opinion we will get the best result using this technique on one color camo. I'm done with oil paints, now it's time for some acrylic paints. If you've been my viewer for some time, maybe you remember the episode about painting tiger exhausts when I use these paints. If you don't know this video, the link is in the description. 
On these thin exhaust pipes I decided to apply the same products but paint them with a brush. It takes some time but the effect is worth a few extra minutes spent on the proper arrangement of the colors. I decided to build the appearance of slightly rusty muffers where the lighter shades will be more intense at the exit from the covers that is closer to the hull and engine getting darker towards the exhaust ends. There I wanted to make standard shots which actually don't have a reflection in reality but it looks cool. In short, another artistic freedom. And of course it's very important to use the accelerator here which significantly speeds up the working time. I have said it more than once, next to airbrush and other tools, it's one of the most important devices that should be in our workrooms. I decided that the towing cables would be suspended from the rear using shackles and hull shapes. In addition I added small bars on the sides and in the middle which are designed to support the ropes on the hull. After painting but before weathering I mounted them on the hull gluing CA glue in some places. Of course there was also a chain which I mentioned earlier when writing the action plan. I glued it to the model using pigment cement which I have already checked in use many times and it passed the exam. A bit of black wash and a gentle pencil wipe worked perfectly because I wanted these elements to contrast quite strongly with the color of the hull. They were supposed to look brand new and that's what I managed to achieve. No rust and no mud, pure steel. The most time consuming, dirty and the most effective stage of work begins. I am talking about applying of the pigment to the hull and turret in places that will determine the final appearance of the model. At the same time it's also about building contrast by properly emphasizing details. Our goal is to create an imitation of dust that is collected while driving off road or on dirty roads where the amount of dust is huge. Everyone who at least once drove on a dry dirt road in the summer or followed someone collecting all the dust picked up by the wheels of the vehicle in front knows what I'm talking about. Of course, as in the case of the chassis, I fixed the pigment using right spirit. Turning on the accelerator I got rid of excess and dust that was not glued to the model. As you can see I used two brushes for this, a small one for spot application and a white one for spreading the pigment over the surface. The third brush is used only for applying white spirit. In addition to the dust I also made some dried mud once again using the method used on the wheels. This is giving me the best results at the moment.
Nearing the end I took care of making a few extra effects. Making stains on a dusty surface is very easy, especially since thinner spreads very well on such a prepared ground. Different proportions of wash and engine grease oil paint always pass the test for the highest marks. How much our model will be splashed depends only on us, but it's worth remembering the principle that less is better than more. So I suggest looking at the model from a slightly greater distance than 20 cm every few moments. This will give you an idea of how the model will look and how much work we still need to do or whatever we've already done enough. At the beginning I mentioned the possibility of supporting me on Patreon, but now having couple free seconds I would like to thank all my current patrons. You are great guys. It would be superb if you joined this group. Check which level will be the best for you. Your support is highly appreciated and helps me do what I do here at Coldemons PL. Thanks to this I will try to give you some interesting content to keep you informed and entertained. Thank you very much. I mentioned that my models almost always have a chain. And here I will go to the max and there will be two chains. The latter is definitely bigger and with non-standard endings. Some kind of consistency is expressed here by the way how this chain looks like. The lack of rust or other dirt is not accidental. As with the towing cables I wanted this element to contrast strongly with the dusty hull. You can say that the chain is new, hardly used, almost straight from the factory. I glued it with pigment cement. A few drops were enough to keep such a large element on the model. I used a soft pencil to make metallic scuffs here and there. I have no doubt that it adds a bit of metallic look and it's a nice addition if you don't overdo it. Even some small chips and scratches can be done with it. Finally, I had to mount the figures. I painted them in a very minimalist way, the more so that they will be almost invisible after mounting in the model. Both figures have interesting helmets that most closely resemble modified Fallschirmjäger's helmets, but I don't know. They also have some special stands, spacers prepared so that their positioning in the hatches is appropriate. Just to make the note about them fulfilled, they are paper panzer production products and probably are not available at all. So maybe some producer will prepare the set of what if tankers for E-series, who knows. And this is how the finished model looks like. 
Today's episode was quite long, but the amount of work I did on this model was worth showing almost in its entirety. Now all I have to do is build a base or take care of another model. Well, I'm still wondering what will make me more happy. If you did enjoy this video, please like it, write a comment, even to say hello and subscribe to my channel. If you have a moment, check out my other videos from the series How to Paint, Bookshelf and Open the Box. For now, please check the pictures of ready-made model and of course there is an option to see more, but I'm sure most of people don't. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you here next week. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!